Alright, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of a Kerbal Space Program Career Mode. And in the last video, we were able to complete a few contracts uh, just by flying by and orbiting the moon. Now for this video, we have two contracts loaded up already. So we have Explore the Moon, Walk on the Surface of the Moon, and uh, Science Data from Surface of the Moon. So we will have to land on the moon in this video. There's also another contract that I see here that says science data from space around the moon. That will be trivial compared to what we are also going to do with the other contracts. So we're just going to go ahead and accept that and the rest of these I'm just going to leave as is. Now for our rocket this video, we're going to be pretty much using the exact same rocket that we used to orbit the moon in the last video. The only difference is, is that we are going to add some landing legs and probably some science parts and to do that we need to upgrade the VAB for 225,000 funds, which will give us a max part limit of 255 and also give us the action groups, which we can hit uh, the numbers one through zero and activate, you know, like stuff like all of our solar panels at once or all of our antennas at once, or even our landing legs. We can have all those go at the same time if we so choose. Now, one thing I should mention before we really get any further into building this rocket, I am noticing that the texture and design for the Terrier liquid fuel engine has changed and that's because we have upgraded our save to the 1.6 to V or not to V update. And for this update, pretty much we just get a bunch of part redesigns. Um, we also get a Delta V calculator, thrust to weight ratio, ISP, um, total thrust, start and end, uh, weights, burn time. We get a lot of unique information so we no longer have to use a delta v mod although one thing i don't like is that all the delta v is calculated at sea level so it's a little bit different than the mod we were using in episode two and three uh it, it works just a little bit different than that so we'll have to figure out kind of our delta v requirements in a new way compared to uh, what we did last time. But since we're building a very similar rocket to the one we did last time to orbit the moon, we should have plenty of Delta V uh, to get to the moon surface and back to Kerbin. So I'm not gonna worry about that too much in this video. Hopefully someone will update a chart and uh, let us know how we can mess around and get kind of like a more exact number based on where we are in Earth's gravity well. One part change that I'm actually really happy about is this aerodynamic nose cone because it used to be blue, but now we just have white and black options or a mix of the two. And I really, really like this one because the white and the blue never matched up with anything else uh, on the part list for uh, you know, rockets that would use uh, similar 1.25 colored parts. So easily one of my more favorite parts of the update. Let's make sure we check our staging because we tend to have a bad habit of not doing that. Let's fire both of those at the same time. Everything looks good. So basically all we've added to uh, the, the pretty much the last rocket is it looks a little bit different. Just it looks a little bit better. I think it's longer than the last one. But that's fine because our delta V is, I'm assuming, still good enough. And our thrust to weight ratio at launch is a 1.43. So very good on that. We also added uh, four of the landing legs so we can very safely land on the moon. And I think these have an impact tolerance of 10, uh, 10 meters per second. We also added uh, two barometers and two thermometers. We probably only need one, but just in case they have a mass or any sort of drag, it's spread evenly throughout the top of the rocket. And I think with all that considered, we are good to go. We have Jebediah as our pilot once again. He seems to be our uh, biggest contender for astronaut of the year at this point. And we're just gonna save this craft as Moon 2 Lander. And I'm gonna try and keep this launch as short and sweet as possible because we pretty much went through all the steps of getting into an orbit and all that stuff in the last couple videos so we're gonna you know throttle up accelerate until we hit about 100 meters per second and then we're gonna start tilting over uh towards the 45 degree marker on the nav ball at around 10,000 meters of altitude and we'll pretty much stay at that 45 degree angle until it carries us up to an altitude of about 80,000 meters and at that point we will shut down the engines and circularize with the second stage
And you'll notice with our Delta V over here on the second stage that it's climbing as we get out of the atmosphere and we get uh, further from the sphere of influence of, or we get, uh, we get further from Earth's gravity well, meaning that gravity has less of an effect on us and we no longer have like uh, atmosphere to fight us and it kind of knows that. So we're exiting the atmosphere here in about a minute. Uh, we want to increase this just a little bit more by like 5,000 meters. There we go. Right at 80,000 meters. And one of the things that has happened since we updated our mods, or updated uh, KSP to version 1.6, is we no longer have any of our mods installed. Um, any of our like really, really good ones that I liked, like the D-Magic Maneuver Node, or Enhanced Maneuver Node, or whatever. Uh, like that, so I can no longer pin maneuvers to the apoapsis or periapsis or the any of the ascending or descending nodes, which is kind of a bummer. Um, I know that um, D Magic is updating some of the mods already that he has produced in the past, so hopefully we'll see the maneuver node one updated very shortly. But for right now, we'll just have to go with uh, bare bones KSP maneuver node placing. So we'll have 40 seconds of burn time at this maneuver node, and we have 67 seconds of burn time in our uh, still technically main stage. So we shouldn't have to separate very early. We may have to separate on the transition to the moon. I was a little bit late there. Again, I'm I like it. I'm like, oh, I got th I got you know 15 seconds till I have to start the burn, and then I fucking start explaining shit, and uh, or at least trying to explain shit, and then I get, <laughs> I miss it a little bit. So our uh, our orbit's probably not going to be perfectly circular, but that's okay. We'll get to the moon just fine. And there we go. We're like 17 meters per second. Yeah, that's why. Okay, so we were a little bit. Uh, too far radial in when we started that burn, so we're off on our periapsis and apoapsis by about 20,000 meters. I'm not going to worry about that too much. It's honestly not going to be too much of a problem. So we're going to set the moon as the target, and then we'll get the ascending and descending nodes. So I'm going to try and actually I want to clip the other one for the maneuver. So let's put that here, add maneuver, and then we're going to pin the descending node so that it makes sure that we are able to see once we have gotten 0, 0.0 degrees. And I'm gonna put this right in the middle. I'm gonna put these on perpendicular, I guess, to our maneuver here. I'm gonna try. It's not gonna work very well, but oh well. There we go. Okay, so now we have a 0% inclination uh, uh, towards the moon. So we should line up perfectly with its orbit. Now I am going to change the thrust limiter on this, and I gotta remember to change it back before we, uh, before we try to make the transfer to the moon. So let's get that thrust down to about 20% on the limiter, and then we're gonna roll over to our maneuver node marker, which is on the anti-normal. I think I didn't know that in the last video, is anti-normal, which changes our attitude, which was the correct word. I got a little bit I got a little bit scared that I didn't know that uh, that word correctly, but I did in the last video. So we're just gonna time warp until we uh, are about a minute until our T minus zero on our maneuver node. And then we are going to slowly time warp until we are right around 10 seconds till. There we go. So we're gonna open the map at this point and zoom in. So we wanna burn right between four and three. There we go. We're just gonna watch these Watch that solid line hit the dotted line of the maneuver node. There we go. So we're 0.3 meters per second difference. But we still get the 0, 0.0 degree uh, inclination difference. So our moon's about like there. So I'm going to try and burn. I'm going to just place one here. We're going to go prograde just like normal. And we will have a stage separation for this, but that's not going to be too big of a deal, and that actually worked out pretty well. I'm just going to leave it there, because we don't need to, we don't really need to change that too much, so we're going to get, like, we're in, th you know, 33,000 meters. That'll be, that'll be a very nice orbit once we get to it. Maybe they change that. I think they changed that, because I've been playing around in 1.6, um, in my personal career mode, um, and it seems that when you have a maneuver node, it's pretty accurate now, like where when you say, you know, warp to next maneuver, 
it like actually warps you and like the same amount of burn time towards the T minus. So like it would normally burn us to two minutes and 12 seconds. And that way we still have a minute and six seconds to get ready. Because I know uh, in uh, previous editions of a Kerbal Space Program, it would you would auto warp and it would warp way past the maneuver node or like get way too close for you to do anything. And so I'm glad they kind of changed that. I don't know if that's a change, but if it they did change it, then awesome. Because that kind of just makes things way more easy. And it's one less thing that you have to worry about. So we're going to burn on uh, one minute and six seconds towards our... Uh, maneuver node and since we do have a stage separation within this burn we will have to make sure we are out of the map when we do that because you cannot uh use the stage pretty much this is a, pretty much an action group so you can't use the stage action group uh while you're in the map which is kind of annoying but it's also kind of helpful just in, you know so you don't mess anything up but i kind of wish you didn't have to do that sometimes for really easy missions like this where you just need it like right away and i'm <laughs> I'm just remembering oh fuck I just remembered I told myself I have to change the thrust limiter and I didn't it's still at 20% why am I an idiot when will when will I change when will I change never that's the answer to that whatever it's not a big deal like I always say it'll be all right nothing to worry about we'll figure it out and I'm noticing in our uh, second stage we don't exactly have that long of a burn time uh, so we will have to use the- I'm- I'm really glad- okay, so the Snark, I believe is his name, updated the- maybe it's not Snark, I think it's Snark. But he updated the, uh, better burn time to 1.6 very quickly. So thank you for that, because that's really, really helpful for moon landings or any kind of landing. Because it pretty much tells you, uh, time to impact, which is very important for stuff like this where you can do a really easy suicide burn or bursts of burns to land. There we go, there's our stage separation. And there's the very cool new design of the Terrier liquid fuel engine in action. And I think we may have overshot it slightly because I wasn't paying attention to how much Delta V we had left. But it seems our moon periapsis is at 290 right now. Let's get that a little bit closer. Kind of way more similar to our maneuver node. 25? 25 is good. I just love how small this craft is at this point. Like, we still have 2,000 plus uh, meters per second of Delta V, and this little tiny thing is going to land on the moon and then still allow us to come back and land on Kerbin. Like, that. I don't know why that's so insane to me, but it is. So let's just go ahead and warp until we are in the moon's sphere of influence. And then once we are in here, we are in the moon's sphere of influence. All we are going to do is fly by the moon. We can go ahead and do our barometer and thermometer uh, science experiments and log those. So we're going to go ahead and keep those. And I'm going to see, I don't know if I can collect. I can't. Okay. So sometimes on the uh, unmanned like probe controllers and stuff like that, you have the option to just collect all the science to them. But on this one, we do not. So we're going to have to get Jeb out of the cockpit and select our barometer we're going to take this data and take this data and we don't need a scientist to uh kind of reinstate the experiment because it is not a mr u container or a science junior so we can just take those and then we can just use them again uh, when we get close to the moon and when we land on the moon so i'm also going to go ahead and do an eva report which i probably should have done while he was out so 16 science go ahead and keep that and we'll board I'm not going to do a crew report until we land on uh, the moon itself because we only get one. We only get like one per capsule unless we transfer it. And since we have nothing to transfer, uh, transfer it to, we're just going to go ahead with that. So I'm going to turn on the SAS here. We're going to uh, uh, hold on the retrograde because this is pretty much the only, only thing we really need to do to land on the moon. Landing on the moon is really easy. We just have to... Uh, the hardest part is just finding the flattest space possible to land on the moon because there are a lot of dips and curves and craters and stuff like that which can really kind of mess up the moon landing and tilt it over and all that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and quick save now so that if we do mess up we can always come back to this quick save and reload it. And then from this point I'm going to go ahead and go into our map set a maneuver at the periapsis what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull on the retrograde until we circularize i feel like i've used that word so much in this series 
already, and it's only like the fourth episode. Let's see, Apple Apps is 27. That's a little bit off. 28, 23, we want to go out a little bit. Does that change anything? 31, 20, no, that's not good. Uh, 22, 28, damn. Give me the right one. Give me, give me, make it even. There we go, that's about as good as we're gonna get. And I'm just gonna hold on the retrograde again. I'm not gonna move over to the blue maneuver node marker. Just because by the time we get to our maneuver, uh, the blue marker will be on the retrograde and it won't be that important to uh, make sure we burn exactly on the maneuver node marker. So we got a 16 second burn to circularize. And I think we're just gonna go ahead and bypass uh, the the orbit and just kind of go straight down to the moon Unless we want to do some science in low moon orbit. Let's go ahead and do that real quick log pressure data Okay, we'll keep that experiment log temperature data. Let's go ahead and keep that we'll do a EVA Once again EVA report. We'll keep that 24 science. We got a lot of stuff in here uh, Let's see review stored data 24, 24, 16, 16, and... Oh, we never took it out of there. Okay, so we're good. And now, all we need to do is do one little... One little burn to get us into a intersecting orbit with the moon. Not really intersecting, because we've already, we're already, like, in the sphere of influence, but be able to get down to it. And I'm not too concerned about the timing on this and whatnot, um, because it doesn't really matter. We do have an orbit of the moon now, by the way. But it doesn't really matter, but since, since we're just going to go and try and land on the moon pretty much straight away. I'm going to try and shoot for, like, here if we can. But it looks like there's a lot of hills there. But pretty much anywhere that's flat, this kind of would have been ideal. This large, flat area right here. But we got to work with what we got. So maybe here. Maybe here instead. That's looking like it's going to line up with our uh, orbital path or suborbital path. We're just going to speed up just a little bit here. Make sure we don't do anything too stupid. And one thing we are going to do so that we can land on the moon is we're going to toggle our action group. And that is an action group that automatically deploys any landing legs. So it looks like we have a burn time of... That's not right. We have an impact time of 14 seconds. So this is going to change. So it's not perfect with this. So I'm going to wait until we're about uh, an impact in 10 seconds. Hopefully they didn't update it, so it's like, it's 14 seconds. But our estimated burn time will go down, so it's not perfect, again, like I said. So we'll have to do short, um, choppy burns, which is fine. But we just want to get inside about 6 meters per second. That'll be pretty much our good enough threshold. So we got a burn time of 1 second now. Let's kill off more of that velocity. There we go, and... Let's make sure we don't really go any faster than what we want. So, three meters per second, and just just barely climbing. And a little bit of a hard landing, because I didn't let it go all the way. But we have landed on the moon, just like that. It's that simple. All we need to do is a little bit of, uh, of self-control and throttle control. So, let's log this temperature. Keep the experiment. Log the pressure data. Keep that experiment. And then we are going to EVA, and we are going to let go and activate our thrusters and get Jeb down to the surface of the moon. So let's take an EVA report to find out which biome we're in. We are in the Midlands. We'll keep that experiment. We'll take a surface sample, which is a whopping 120 science, if we recover it, which we will. So we're going to go ahead and keep that. And then what we want to do next is just plant... A flag, and I believe this gives Jeb XP, but I'm not for sure. But we're gonna do it anyway because it is part of... Oh, you know what? You know what I should have done? Maybe I shouldn't have planted that flag. I should have probably waited and checked the Mission Control to see if it was going to make us do that. But, either way, we're gonna name this Da Moon, da Moon Midlands. So that we know what biome it is. And that it is, in fact, the moon. So we're going to get out of there. And now all we need to do is activate our thrusters once again. And we'll get Jeb back into the command pod of the moon to lander. So we're going to get F to grab. Don't climb. Just grab, please. Thank you. And then we're going to board. Now all we need to do is we want to check 
Space Center. We want to check the Mission Control to see if there's any contracts that we can, any new contracts that we're going to get from uh, landing on the moon. And here we go. It looks like we have an Explore the Moon contract. And it says rendezvous two vessels in orbit of the moon. So we're going to go ahead and accept this because we will have to do it to progress in the uh, Kerbal World First uh, Record Keeping Society or whatever contracts. So we will have to do this to get another one. And one way that we can do this in this video is that if we select one of the rescue uh, whatever, some person, some Kerbal from the orbit of the moon, we can just rendezvous with that ship. We won't actually complete that contract because we won't be able to save them because our command pod only holds one person and we can't, you know, put them in our command pod as well. We can't just can't just do that. You know, you can't just break the rules like that. So we can do this and get that contract complete in this video as well. So we don't have to do it later and do another uh, moon launch mission right away. But we risk uh, losing 64,000 funds and uh, 12 reputation from actually doing this but we're gonna go ahead and do it anyway because we still should be able to get back to Kerbin uh, as well as doing this because usually they're in pretty low orbits uh, as far as my experience with rescuing people from orbits of the moon or Kerbin or something like that so we're gonna go ahead and accept that but we're not gonna do it that just places uh, the Melton Kerbal in the orbit of the moon which will allow us to rendezvous with them and as you'll see their orbit is very very close periapsis of only 10,000 wow okay uh and 14,000 apoapsis so they're very close to us right now at this moment so if we were to select the moon to lander we should be able to catch up with them very quickly and maybe even rendezvous like insanely fast so we're gonna go ahead and do that so we want to make sure that now that we're on the moon that we have an eastward launch and so we're just going to uh, rotate this a little bit. Hopefully it allows us to rotate even though we're still planted on the moon and it is allowing us to. So we can just go straight eastward just like we're used to and pressing the same buttons that we, as we would with a uh, Kerbal, uh, Kerbin launch. So we're just gonna launch straight upward and then we're gonna go almost immediately to the right or east in uh, the moon's in the moon's like uh, cardinal directions and then we're going to try and get this apoapsis up to right around where we would meet them so right there this may be like this may be like perfect they are traveling a significant deal faster than us so maybe if we just like even this out well, let's check out the separation see if we can't get the separation pretty damn close and let's do a little bit radial in so we get that separation like super close and we don't increase our apoapsis too much above uh theirs so there we go on that let's go ahead and burn a little bit radial this time to get our a little bit closer we have pretty much all the time in the world to do this. I just want these two orange markers to get within, I believe, 0.5 kilometers or 500 meters of one another. And then once they're pretty much stacked on top of each other, then we can increase our apoapsis and all that stuff to fit uh, the to fit where we would actually meet them. I'll try and figure that this out so we can do this on one pass and we don't have to. Oh yeah, we don't have to worry about it. So that, I'll, I think what we need, we don't even need the relative speed. Like, that's not a thing we need to do because we're not docking with them. So it really, really doesn't matter. We just need to get in close, you know? And we're, as, it, we're still getting closer all the time. So we're going inter to intersect them at a pretty substantial rate. But we're going to get that separation down to hopefully, that's about as close as we can get by doing it that way. Let's go ahead and do prograde now. And actually, we're going to have to do an ascending node. So let's toggle uh, the orbit on. So we're going to have to go normal, not anti-normal. We want normal so that we go up in the direction of our orbit. 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7. So 0.7 is about as good as we're going to get. And then let's go prograde once again, see if we can't. It's a lot of trying to maneuver and um, get in close and get a uh, rendezvous with a ship. is a lot of just kind of like trial and error, it seems like, as far as when I do it. It seems that way. For more advanced players, I'm assuming they know how to do it pretty well. So we're stuck at 0.7 right now. Hopefully we can get a little bit closer than that. 0.8. Okay, so that's gonna be an issue. Okay, let's... Ah, I see why. I see why. Let's go... Let's go uh, anti-normal now. It's a lot of this. It's a lot of this. Really, honestly, it'd be great if we had, like, 
the option to do a maneuver node before we had to deal with this, but it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. And here we go. 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and... Oh, man, we're so close to that zero separation. And let's make sure we check our delta V just <laughs> before we do too much of this. So 504 meters per second. We still should be good. You know what? I think 1.1 uh, 1 .1 kilometers is going to do us good enough for that. I'm not going to worry too much more about that because we do have a stable orbit at this point and we just need to get back to Kerbin. So again, I think we, we discussed this in the last video, but again, we'll burn right around here so that we exit the moon's sphere of influence and going this way retrograde to the earth, uh, to the moon's uh, rotation around the earth. And then we'll uh, try to uh, drop our periapsis of Kerbin down to around 50,000 meters. So hopefully we can get this pretty soon. So we got three minutes and 30 seconds till. Oh, and here we go. We got it. We got it. We got the rendezvous two vessels in orbit of the moon. We already got it and we are still a bit away from them. It doesn't show our separation right now, but either way, we still got the uh, contract done and we are in a stable orbit. And we're not going to crash into these people because we have a separation of 0.1 kilometers. Let's see. Uh, let's check out our periapsis. 8,000. Ooh. That could be that could be rough, depending on... I tell you what. Let's go ahead into the Space Center once again to see if there's any uh, other contracts that we can possibly complete in this video or the next. Okay, so we get a new one. We get Explore Minmus. Uh, from the record keeping society and it's a flyby of Minmus and return to Kerbin from a flyby of Minmus awesome That will be very easy and it's a lot we're getting a lot of money a lot of science a lot of reputation We're absolutely gonna accept that and we will go to Minmus in the next video But now the only thing we need to worry about from this point is getting back to Kerbin safely So we're gonna unset that as the target and we're going to set maneuver node right here and we're just going to go and uh, prograde until we see that it exits the moon's sphere of influence. There we go. And then we can probably uh, move this to get this down even further if we're, you know, careful. So let's pin that periapsis, our projected periapsis. And it seems like right around here is the best place to burn on the, uh, in the retrograde direction of the moon. So we're going to bring that periapsis down once more and we're gonna have to change this a little bit here we go we'll just rotate it this way so we're, that we're uh, parallel as much parallel as we can with the uh, moon's retrograde direction and that'll just you know bring down our periapsis even more without allowing for any more burn time because burning exactly retrograde to the moon is gonna be our best bet and it seems like right around there is good and we have no periapsis that's fine for right now because we'll be able to just throttle and adjust that as we go i'm not gonna worry about that too much and we only have a burn time of 10 seconds let's see how much we have on this we have 18 seconds so we are getting back to earth we are getting we are getting jeb back home from another uh interplanetary mission even though moon's not a planet obviously but we'll call it that anyway and here we go our last and final burn of the mission we're going to get Jeb with inside that atmosphere, and we will use the atmosphere to slow down once we are there, and boom. And we'll just pretty uh, pretty steadily throttle until we're in right around 50,000 meters. And there we go. 46,000. That's fine. We got a heat shield. We got a heat shield. We're going to be coming in a little bit hot, but that's okay. And now we're just going to time warp out of the moon sphere of influence, and we are now back in Kerbins. So we can toggle this gear action group once again to... Uh, retract those landing legs and here we go here in about five seconds we'll get inside the atmosphere there we go we are going a solid 3,000 meters per second and our uh, fuel is only gonna reduce that if we burn in the retrograde direction to about 2,900 so we're going to very quickly get rid of this and just go ahead and eject it because at this moment there is no way we can't land on the moon because our apoapsis is always, our apoapsis is going to slowly go further down, but our periapsis is always going to stay within the Earth's atmosphere, or Kerbin's atmosphere, excuse me, I forget the Earth is not real in this dimension. Hopefully we can do this on this pass-through, but I doubt it. I think we're going to have to make another pass at this before we are able to deploy our parachute and land on Kerbin. And also, hopefully we have enough uh, ablator, because I reduced it to 100 to reduce... Uh, the amount of a blader we would have to carry up to space, which, because a blader weighs 
mass, and, you know, we get a better delta V if we do that. But, with that comes the problem of maybe using it too much, and I don't think we're going to get our apoapsis inside that uh, the atmosphere, so we get this all in one pass. So I think we will have to make another pass at our periapsis to get with inside the atmosphere uh, permanently. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the term for this is aerobraking. <laughs> I'm not for sure, but basically we're sacrificing our right to circularize the orbit because we don't have enough fuel to do so, so we just use the atmosphere to slow down our velocity to bring our apoapsis down and reduce our overall total velocity for the orbit which is going to allow us to stay within inside the atmosphere and land on Kerbin safely. The only thing wrong with this is that we will have to make a few passes at Kerbin or through Kerbin's atmosphere to bleed off enough velocity to be able to land, but it's a very safe and efficient way to do that without having a mass amount of Delta V. So I apologize right now if we don't land on the light side of Kerbin, which it looks like we are probably not going to, we will probably end at the uh, district between light and dark. We may land there, but I'm not 100% sure where it's going to happen. And it is very dark, so I won't be able to see the surface, so I'll kind of have to judge based off the uh, altitude meter up here to see if we can uh, land safely. And it looks like we're slowing down enough so that our parachutes should be safe to deploy. So I'm gonna w make sure this is gray before we do that and safe to deploy. There we go. So we're gonna do that as soon as possible so we can uh, bleed off as much velocity as possible and have the safest landing possible. All right, so we have landed in Kerbin's water. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an EVA real quick. We are going to do a surface sample. I should probably take off the time warp right here. We're gonna take a surface sample. We're gonna keep it. We are going to do an EVA report with Jeb. And this is just some extra science stuff. And then we are also going to do, I think these all are full at the moment. Yep, okay, so we need to EVA once more. And then we are going to take this data from these two science parts. So now we need to board back in because Jeb will not be able to use the science parts, even though we can just use it automatically. I don't know why that doesn't work. But either way, we have all the science that we could possibly get uh, with this mission and a uh, nice safe landing for Jeb. So let's go ahead and recover and see what we get. And there we have it. We earn a whopping 425.2 science for the mission. And so we have an insane amount early on at 576. And Jeb earns two XP and is getting closer to that level two, which will allow us to use, I believe, both of the radial in and radial out. Uh, maneuver node holds as well as the attitude for the normal and anti-normal holds as well and then I think at level three he gets the maneuver node hold so that'll be very nice once we reach that and so we now have a total reputation of 247 bringing us up to a 24.7 percent and some ribbons for the mission uh, let's just go over the important ones I guess so uh, first Kerbal planting a flag on the moon first Kerbal taking footsteps on the moon and uh, being the first Kerbal to land on the moon so good job Jeb we have done it once again let's warp till morning and with another successful mission in the books that is going to bring this video to a close we will mess with the science points uh, for the research and development center in the next video when we uh, do a flyby and possible orbit of Minmus. So that is going to do it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and leave a like, comment, or subscribe down below. Make sure you hit that little bell notification so that you get notified every time that we go live or post a new video. You can also find me on Twitter, Instagram, and TrueAchievements.com to keep up to date on other projects that I'm working on or to just peek in at my daily life. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you dudes in the next video.